Hey everybody, welcome back to Plone Conference 2021, track one. I am here with Nicola, who's going to be talking to us about sustainability and web development. Nicola, when you're ready. Oh, um, thank you, Andy. Um, hello, everyone. I'm super glad to be here this year, um, live from Sorrento, uh, but I'm missing the people who are not here. Uh, firstly, I want to thank my, world, my girlfriend, uh, partner in business and in life. Um, I'm Nicola, I'm a front-end developer and I run in, in raw material. Uh, and in raw material, we work on Plone for consultancy and projects, uh, trying to, to get the, the academical knowledge to something practical to get um, the resources to have a more sustainable web. Uh, Across all over the world, uh, we are raising awareness of the impact carbon emissions have on our environment and global warming and climate change are slowing down. So we have to change our behavior um, to get a better world for the future. Fossil fuels are still the primary uh, energetical source and renewable sources aren't enough for the, for the entire supply chain. Uh, so, we, as the key actors of our industry, we have the responsibility uh, to change our sector and study what is our impact. Uh, have you ever thought about digital sustainability? Um, you know, it's not la like aviation where you have to burn fuel to get energy, uh, to get work done, uh, but still we are using a lot of energy so we are having a lot of impact on the environment. And can we estimate what's the impact of the web development and web industry in general? Um, to get an idea of the big picture, uh, we have some comparison to get an order of magnitude of that. Uh, keep in mind that we, we should have like 20 billion devices in, in 2020 uh, and that we can estimate uh, Google search uses energy as a light bulb of, for several seconds. Uh, internet generates emissions like the airline industry. Well, we can compare the internet uh, for like the sixth country for electricity usage. And still we have less than the 3% of web website powered by renewable energy in 2020. So yes, for, uh, from a global point of view, uh, for energy usage, internet emissions are enormous. Uh, websites do use electricity uh, in data centers where a web server is running, so it uses energy and runs a web server to publish resources, uh, to run a backend, to serve resources to clients, and when transmitting network packages, uh, we get electricity to transmit resources of any kind. And we have end user devices uh, where we're using power from batteries. And there are the main focus of my talk because uh, as a front end developer, I'm focusing on client uh, software. Uh, but also as an industry, we have operations, so uh, travels to meet a client, uh, to commuting of developers, uh, going to offices, so remote work is optimal in this, in this uh, view. Uh, we have the, sorry, we have the design uh, because communication is uh, always a central uh, factor from communica communicating uh, your project when you're building a green uh, software with a green uh, service of any kind uh, from uh, the communication so uh, users can try, uh, usually uh, found uh, what they're looking for quickly um, but design is also the really content and a durable design means that we don't have to rework stuff and this is more workable for developers uh, when you don't, we didn't have fancy UIs. And of course, we have the development because we are using devices, so we are using a lot of energy. 
<clears throat> hosting is a field where it can have a lot of impact and we can uh, also cut a lot of, of uh, electricity usage by using um, uh, small attentions and less impact using renewable energies. Um, and there are several hosting providers that claim to use only uh, renewable energy. So uh, check them uh, because uh, there are many. And uh, Esner, which is a big player in Europe, uh, is among them, by the way. Uh, is this greenwashing? Uh, greenwashing is uh, a practice of companies in which they pretend they are environmentally beneficial while uh, it is in contradiction of what re they are really doing. Um, I have here an example from the Shell website. And, you know, <laughs> obviously that they, they are producing, they are producing uh, oil products uh, while their website is fulfilled by um, climate articles, sustainability records. Um, this is greenwashing. So they are having a huge impact on the environment, but they are pretending to be green. Um, there are also web companies. They are pretending to be green because they are using uh, hosting from renewable energies. Uh, but this is, it is not enough uh, to have a really green web. Uh, others are planting trees because there are companies that allow you to plant trees, uh, growing for forests where there is the deforestification. And there are really huge, uh, big projects. I love them, but they are, the goal should be to not to pollute, uh, not to compensate where you're emitting. Uh, the correct way to address and analyze the impact of any product or services, uh, it is a carbon footprint, which is the total amount of gases you're emitting with uh, an action in general. Uh, and you can achieve that with a life cycle assessment, uh, which is a tool to calculate the global emission uh, of a service, a product, a methodology um, concerning the whole process from the beginning to the end of the process. And we are working on that at raw material to get a model for a life cycle assessment for the web. Uh, practical speaking, um, firstly, I don't, I don't want to get you uh, a, a list of do's and don'ts, something good and bad, uh, but I, I'd like to convey uh, what is important uh, to understand the real problem. So we have uh, the tools uh, to acknowledge what to do and not to follow a guide, you know? So um, what is really drawing power? Uh, in our machines, uh, the power usage is behind the processing tasks uh, that are on our CPUs. Um, so the CPUs involved in any calculation we have, the GPU is involved in the painting process for the web and the animations. Uh, and all, obviously we have networking for transmitting packages and we have the screen, uh, but I'll leave it out because the screen is, the screen power uses is barely constant and it is mainly under user control. Speaking on rendering, which is, uh, the process we are most involved um, it begins when the browser loads the html then parses the html and the resources into the dom and parses css into the css om you know um, this whole process must be efficient when you're loading resources because then you will have the printing process the painting process uh, is the one uh, in which the GPU is involved, and this where the browser we render contents of the page. Uh, our course, our code must be efficient uh, in the rendering process because it's the cradle of all the aspects we can highlight. Uh, if we put extra effort into the rendering process, we are affecting power consumption. 
to optimize power consumption, we should leave it computation and resources the browser is loading uh, as much as possible. Uh, both peak, peak usage and long running tasks are damaging uh, power efficiency. Uh, but here we are speaking about performance after all. Uh, this is anything new. Uh, if you are optimizing for mm, the main performance metrics, you're also optimizing for power usage. Uh, the first aspect to keep in mind is to have efficient code for user interactions, even the loading of the page. Uh, metrics like time to user interactive and time to first paint are key vital metrics to understand uh, the, the amount of calculation in the rendering process the browser is having while loading your page. Um, you can see that if you have lower values for those metrics, you have more work to do. Um, when the page is not the frontmost content, content, or it is the frontmost, but is it the user is not interacting with, with it, the tab will should become uh, idle, so it will it should consume no energy. Um, if a page transmits uh, data infrequently, so maybe when it is not the focus tab, uh, the overhead can become. Uh, more and more than the actual uh, network transmission. And the goal here should be to get idle, the CPU idle as soon as possible. Uh, if you want to have a comparison um, to the car industry, uh, you may have the truck or uh, an hydrogen car, which is emitting only uh, water. Uh, the goal, my goal, my personal goal is to get uh, a truck website to consume like an hydrogen car. Um, and that's my long term mission, uh, because you don't hope you don't hope and have to build a truck. Uh, you may have to build a truck. And that's a trade off, because you have to consume energy because that's worth you, you're building something that consume energy, like um, a web-based uh, video game or something based on animation, animations, but uh, then the goal is to have always um, less energy usage as possible. If we get to check any computation, uh, we see that no matter what is the web technology you're using? Uh, but we can have green practices um, that we, I can show you now. Um, the first one is to get, to get valuable content and UX, because it is always important for CEO also, because when users find uh, the things they are looking for quickly, uh, they won't visit any pages because they are looking for it and they can try it, uh, they can find it quickly. Um, the design, as I said, from the communication to the impact to the developer, um, it has an enormous impact on the final product. And images and videos in general uh, media, um, some someone uh, we don't always have to get those on the page so if we can reduce them it is better otherwise we can uh, use svgs so vector graphics which are you know text uh, another case is to optimize them uh, to reduce weight we have uh, blown scales for that and i'm working on on that for volto so we have also the lazy loading. The lazy loading will always have less impact on the first painting because we'll load the heavier content only when visible. Um, fonts, um, use variable fonts when possible. Otherwise uh, you can reduce the variations because often uh, we load uh, 
a large amount of variation when we are using actually two. Um, and then there is JavaScript. I know that several Python developers here could say that uh, JavaScript is the evil, is the cradle of our problems, but um, I'm a JavaScript developer. I, I have to defend that um, because the goal here is to uh, use well our instruments. Um, we should have the focus on uh, how we are using JavaScript. Uh, I always prefer CSS-based solution when possible. Uh, animations are tricky and you should use request animation frame when possible because um, browsers like uh, Safari, so WebKit, um, have this automatically system to stop animations and timers and transitions when the page is not visible. Uh, with JavaScript, we should stop timers um, when the page is not visible and where the user is not interacting with the page. Uh, we also have the page visibility API to check that. Polling is another uh, terrible um, practice. Uh, it is also a bad uh, design example. We, we should use the sockets instead. Um, and the goal is to always have the CPU idle uh, when the page is in the background or not used. For CSS, um, I should recommend you to avoid importing huge libraries uh, when you're using actually the container. Um, and I am also advocate for frameworkless um, front end. So maybe you, you should consider uh, teaming your website without uh, Bootstrap or Semantic UI or anything else, uh, because often uh, you don't have that much um, impact in the, the workflow. Um, CSS can be heavy on rendering. Uh, well, uh, when you're using grids, CSS grids, uh, they are really heavier uh, on, uh, than anything uh, on, the, on the GPU because uh, the browser has to uh, re-render any element containing the grid uh, to get positioning and spaces. And also the same, the same pattern here, it is for Flexbox. Uh, when you're using Flexbox, you may have several uh, nested Flexboxes. And so the browser mean even with multiple layout in the action should uh, have to re-render and recalculate all the dimensions. Uh, that said, uh, CSS will always good, uh, even for animations, um, use it with love. Um, static websites and PVA are easy to optimize uh, to consume very little, uh, so it is it can be a good choice. And put in a cache anything you can. Uh, dark mode is um, recommendable um, as it will consume less energy for screen time. Uh, I made a switch for dark and light mode on my uh, raw materials website. Uh, and then I made it on with two lines of JavaScript and uh, a set of CSS variables. So it is neat and easy, and I recommend you. Um, the always good um, suggestion is to keep the things simple. Do you remember computational complexity for the university? The simpler is always the better. Um, keep the things simple uh, can can make you have more maintainability, uh, so durability and the ability to make improvement in time. Um, I, I can never repeat it enough. Keep it simple. Um, though we can also have a cool acronym here, which is keep internet simple or sustainable. <clears throat> but how do you know if you're on the right path? Um, you can find a lot of academic papers um, and list of good things and bad things or poorly documented tools. Um, academic papers are, in my opinion, not enough practical to get on a real project. Um, and I'm working to have a tool to actually measure what is the energy consumed by your service. 
um, we can have comparison between services, uh, but I didn't find any way to measure, actually measure uh, what's going on in CPU. You should consider the platform, the hardware, the hardware and peculiarities of any system. Uh, we have the Safari to Web Inspector, uh, which is a nice tool if you have a Mac um, that can measure the impact on the CPU. It gives you some um, estimates and statistics on CPU usage and for the threading. So it, you can actually uh, get some introspection about uh, what is having impact on the page load. Uh, there is websitecarbon.com, which is a nice tool uh, from Walgreen Digital. Uh, they are great. They are doing a lot of dissemination, so props. But I didn't find any documentation of how these numbers are determined. Um, so it is a nice tool, by the way. Um, we sure have the Green Web Foundation um, they publish many valuable articles about this topic and they have uh, an open database for uh, hosting providers within renewable energy. Uh, they also uh, have the API to interact with those um, with th that data um, and they are working for uh, green hosting providers. Uh, they also have a lighthouse plugin, um, but to be honest, I, I didn't I didn't check it already. Um, I discovered when I was in the training for Sorento. And um, we have the web accessibility checklist from Mighty Bytes, which is a useful tool. Uh, I leave it the, the link um, with nicer and worse things. But we are at Prune Conference, aren't we? Um, if you take care of all the aspects. Uh, impacting power usage, you can optimize your website to be green. Um, Volta performance uh, is an actual topic for this print. Um, it is overall uh, by far so good because uh, we, if you, if you tweak it a bit, you can achieve really good um, performance. Um, there is no polling, we have the SSR and Volta behaves well as the basement of our projects. And then there is our work to have the actual uh, site project. And I saw that the site project with the team and customizations is the cradle of uh, any problem you, you, can, you could have. Uh, that said, um, I am working on the images lazy loading uh, in the current sprint. And the Vault team is working on performance. Um, so if you're interested in this topic, uh, please join us at the sprint. Um, we can discuss things together. Wrapping it up, uh, if we want to, to have a sustainable web, uh, we want to, discount the, to consider the, the rendering of the page and the task the CPU uh, is processing. Um, so we can have a way of uh, developing digital products uh, to consume less, as little as possible energy. Um, that is to have a lowest possible impact on the environment. But uh, in my opinion, when we're speaking about sustainability, uh, we can't have only um, the environmental sustainability. Uh, you, should, you should have a, a all around discussion about the sustainability of a, a service product or uh, method. Uh, so you should have economical sustainability, energetical, so environmental sustainability, but you should also discuss the social sustainability. So we're speaking about uh, sustainability for people. It comprehends several things uh, like work conditions, uh, the same opportunities for any person, uh, gender equality, the decent work hours and salary, and community involvement. If an industry is not sustainable for the people who are working with them or for the people who um, are using that product or service, then it is not sustainable in the long term. Uh, so we have inclusivity, in inclusivity for people of any et et ethnical roots, uh, sexuality and sex for as for the gender pay gap. 
overworking uh, is a topic uh, that I can have a talk about it. Um, people, it is lovely that people are loving what you are doing, uh, but you need balance. I strongly advocate for 30 hour, uh, hours per week. Um, and I think that the, in a, in a uh, economical uh, democracy, we should have um, the collectivization of the decisions inside uh, co companies and work groups. Uh, community impacts uh, is also good for both users and communities. Um, uh, returning to the environment, you could also, uh, as I said before, uh, plant trees to support the reforestation of uh, our planet. Um, there, there are a lot of talks about um, social sustainability. We can uh, speak about accessibility, which is the same matter. Uh, open source is also good for both users and developers. Uh, privacy of the users, community impact, as I said, uh, technical depth, which is affecting our industry and security of the services we are building. So we are speaking about um, an ethical way to develop products. We must be ethical with our code and the services we are building uh, for both for us and for the whole society. Uh, this is something uh, the food industry and well, we, can, uh, we can talk about it later. Uh, the garment industry uh, is starting to have it, which is the vegan approach. Uh, the vegan approach is, is not about with not having uh, meat or animal derivatives, but it's, uh, it is about the ethical process and, and the environmental and social impact. Um, so the whole process must be ethical from ground up and has to be transparent and trackable. Um, the LCA, so the life cycle assessment I said before, um, is perfect for, for this type of, of practical. Um, so I'm presenting the vegan developer today, a responsible and aware developer who cares about the people and the environment. Uh, the vegan developer, developer definition and the goal for a more sustainable web are in the sustainable web manifesto, which is on raw material website. Um, the goal is uh, far, but we can, um, we are doing research and development to achieve that. And here I have the photo of my fellow assistant during the development. He participated to every call I have. And if you want to dig deeper, and if you're interested in the topic, I'll leave you some links to dig further. Uh, and, the, and at the end of the slides, I put the link to the slides so uh, with a QR code, so you can easily receive them. I will conclude uh, by encouraging you to work for something that makes you sleep better at night, um, to work for something uh, that makes you feel a better person for both the planet and the society. Business interests uh, only bring money, uh, but everyone's interests change the world. Thank you.